Hi everyone, Chris here from BFO Radio and also sportsrehab.com.au where I sell the Sports Rehab Tonica, which is a total BFR training system. Normally on BFR Radio, I would interview someone or review an article of interest. However, today's episode is actually a special episode born from a question from one of my listeners and I actually know this person quite well. So thanks for the email and thanks for trusting me with your question. And from this, I actually do get the occasional email from people asking me how to use BFR in their own specific scenarios. So I thought a much more efficient and quicker manner was for me to actually record the answer in audio format. So not only can this get out quicker, but it may actually be of benefit to others as well. Therefore, this is BFR, your question answered. The question here is actually knee related. And this person has actually just undergone a partial mastectomy and has had 40% of their medial meniscus in their left knee removed. And this was just under a week ago. This person here is actually allowed to start heel to toe walking, hamstring and calf stretches, and a few very low key exercises like mini recumbent cycling. But they were wondering if I could recommend how to use BFR in any way. And even if it is just passively, this is actually because I had a knee operation just over a year ago. And I vlogged it and it's actually on my YouTube channel, which is Sports Rehab Oz. So that's Sports Rehab AUS for Australia. And I I vlogged that each day. And what I actually did is I took the rehab program that you would typically get from the the physio post-surgery. And I guess I took it to the next level, really incorporating everything I could think about around BFR, but also using ice, compression, and other elements such as using bone broth to help any kind of healing that I could. So once again, if you go onto my YouTube channel, you'll actually be able to find it there to give you lots of ideas for your own training. Now, back to the actual question, what can this person do? So the it's a left knee operation. Firstly, I'd actually be looking at the right side and what can we be doing there from day one? Now, when we think of the right side or the non-operated side, we can think about using the concept called contralateral strength training. And this person can actually perform exercises such as leg extension so they could sit on the sofa or on a kitchen bench or a chair and using a small lifting band around the foot. They could be performing leg extensions, really nice high repetitions. Other exercises such as straight leg raises, calf raises, getting on the ground, glute bridges, glute clams, etc. Normally in my own training, I don't do glute clams for very long, but sometimes in the early stage rehab, just being on the floor, just doing any exercises to get some level of activation, I think is really important. So you really need to be drawing on all the exercises you can be doing here. Also, if you actually have any upper body BFR cuffs, you could actually be looking to include simple upper body exercise sessions while seated in a chair. And once again, using lifting bands or light weights and doing big giant sets, picking three exercises, really high repetitions, and just doing those little exercises that what it's going to be doing is not only going to be giving great activation, making you feel good because you're exercising, but also looking for a hormonal benefit as well because one of the major benefits of BFI is being able to increase all those anabolic hormones, which actually helps with promoting protein synthesis, which is actually going to help keep the muscle in our body. Now, when we're looking at the left side here, the question was firstly around passive. And I think that's a really good start for anybody when they're doing BFR post-surgery. One thing that we need to ensure is that a lot of the swelling has actually gone from the joint and that needs to be based upon what you're happy with. And if you're not really familiar with a lot of training, I'd be probably discussing this with a professional before using BFR passively but for myself and I know this gentleman here who has quite a big training age so he's going to know his body quite well I think it's good to start after about three to four days and what I would do is I would use an initial pressure at 40 mils of mercury under their normal training pressure and increase 10 mils of mercury each day just to ensure that everything's feeling pretty good in the joint and nothing's no adverse reaction so me for example my calculated training pressure is 180 mils of mercury. So the first time I actually used passive BFR was at 140 and then each day 10 mils more until I got back up to 180. And once again, this advice is difficult to give in an audio format because really you need to be discussing this 
with the person one-on-one, but this should give you lots of really good ideas. I would assume that the rehab progression is reasonably quite quick because already they're standing doing some heel-to-toe walking and some mini recumbent cycling. Therefore, I think that the activities they're going to be doing with the BFR is not only going to be passive, but it's going to progress to active really quickly. Now, from here, I would actually just really follow a typical rehab program and just look at different ways to include BFR at each stage. Therefore, the already suggested exercises, I think, are well suited to BFR, such as the heel-to-toe walking and the recumbent cycling. And then other really great activities could be just those quad VMO contractions. And this could actually be done seated with the legs straight with a pillow under the knee. And they're progressing this onto terminal knee extensions. And this is firstly in seated with the legs straight and then standing using a band that goes behind the knee and then around a chair or a post of some sort. Calf raises and general walking, once again, a really great exercise is using the BFR cuffs on. Now, earlier I spoke about what you could be doing on the right side, and you can actually be looking at creating little circuits that you can be doing here. So focusing on areas, once again, that may not necessarily be just totally quad or VMO dominated, so less knee joint, but looking at the glutes. So what you're doing on the right side, you could do on the left side with or without the cuff on. So that would be any kind of glute bridges, whether your shoulders are on the ground, those glute clams, um, donkey kicks, leg abduction, adduction with a straight leg whilst laying. So you could be doing this whilst the TV's on and you could be creating little circuits and just keep going. Then you're just rolling on your back, onto your side, back onto your back again. And then also incorporating those VMO contractions as you go along. Also thinking about your progression into your walking with the cuffs on eventually and then also your next progression is being able to handle stairs going up and going down with correct technique because I think anyone who has knee issues over time has just lost their really good technique so step ups and step downs using small graduated steps of around 10 to 15 centimeters initially and just building in that using either textbooks or phone books if they actually exist anymore So when you do this here, I would actually be looking at using furniture or chairs positioned carefully to firstly take off the load off the body and to also to ensure that you can actually get a quality motor pattern. Other things to think about here is just using BFR as pain relief because there's lots of really good evidence around attenuating joint and tendon pain. And I know with a lot of people that use BFR that they have really great effects through the joint. So after a couple of days, you'll understand whether it's going to be a passive or active activities would be best in using BFR for pain relief if you do have any. From there, I would just follow your progressive rehab program according to what the physio or the surgeon had given you in their own guidelines. Ongoing, I'd look at using BFR as a great way to warm up and activate both the musculature and the hormonal systems because I think the hormonal systems play a great part in the type of training responses that we get from our resistance exercises and also i think just long term consider how you want to preserve your joint and potentially use bfr to deload the mechanical stress during lower body strength exercises so what i'm saying there is that if you really enjoy your heavy squats or your heavy lifting that maybe rather than going to 90 percent plus rm using the bfr more around that 70 percent loading or depending on what your knee is able to do myself with my knee joint it can't handle high loads anymore. So with my good joint, I actually do a lot of single leg exercises, really heavy. I go as hard as I want to on my good joint and on my other joint, which I know doesn't like the big stresses, I'll actually just do high reps, low load type activities just to maintain the muscle bulk. And I think that it's actually helping preserve what I've got in my joint and I don't feel any real difference between my left and my right. And I'm pretty happy with how I'm able to go along activities. And I've just had to modify over time of what I can and what I can't do. It's frustrating that I can't lift heavy weights bilaterally anymore, but I get my kicks out of my upper body work, but also my unilateral on my good joint. Hope that was useful and hope that actually answered your question in a small bite site type information piece. 
And if you've got your own questions that you'd like to be answered around how to use BFR in your own specific scenario, and you don't mind me putting this into an audio format, shoot it to me on my socials, which is at Chris Cavillio, and also on my Contact Us page at my website, which is sportsrehab.com.au. Stay tuned. I'm actually, the next podcast is actually going to be the continuation of the mini series on how to use BFR in lots of different scenarios in a knee operation. Uh, so it's really relevant to what I went through and also to what this gentleman's question is. And thanks for listening and thanks for your support during 2020. Lots of really exciting stuff for 2021. Hope you have a good festive season and I'll see you next year.